Guys, welcome to the MIB Master Toy Museum. Oh, I'm your curator, uh, your fellow uh, collector. And uh, some subscribers just wanted to uh, know, like, what do I do on a, a daily basis when I'm not shooting video? <laughs> so is this a video about me? not shooting a video <laughs> well they wanted to just know what what i did in the museum um if i wasn't shooting videos and doing things like that for for the channel so i'm gonna actually i'm down here it's a saturday morning and generally on a saturday morning if I'm not shooting a video um, after my first cup of coffee, naturally, guys, after my first cup of coffee, can't do anything without my coffee, my morning coffee. So after uh, my first uh, cup of coffee, what I'll do is I'll come down to the museum. This is my quiet time. Um, you know, my kids are probably still asleep around this time. It's extremely early right now. So I'll come down here and uh, I'll check out some of my action figures, things of that nature. This is the part where I I am just a kid again. Um, I am just immersed in enjoying my my collectibles it's not about collecting it's not about my channel it's it's not about any of that it's just about uh me enjoying my action figures i found this uh samantha the other day on clearance i had to take advantage of this guys and if you you want to take advantage of the target sales uh, i have a samantha this is my second bewitched uh, samantha figure the first one i got i bought from target's uh, website and when it arrived they had stapled the package the bag that it was wrapped in to the card so the card and if you you watch the Bewitched video, you'll see the two puncture holes in the card. And I always told myself, if I find a minty fresh Samantha card, you know, carded figure, I would uh, I would get another one. So I did. I, I found this on clearance at Target last night and uh, purchased it. Uh, guys, uh, the museum, uh, me being a museum curator, but a collector. And, lo and lover of action figures everything is here <laughs> I just I, I enjoy as you can see we have toys all over the place you know I'm still looking I'm still looking to uh, put these guys somewhere there's my I got a couple of AJ's here at the top action Jacksons a lot of people want to see that what what's the what's the number on the, the sticker uh, this one says two 241 out of 10,000 and this one says 207 out of 10,000 so I'm a big AJ fan I got another one laying around here somewhere but um this is what I do uh, this this is this is what I do uh, my Torak figure I absolutely love that figure right there so I come down here, I um, I look at my action figures, figures that I haven't seen in a while, just to, just to um, admire them. I have the other Joker on the way as well. That's my Wonder Woman. I don't know which, which Wonder Woman I like more the first 14 inch Mego Wonder Woman 
or um, this new 52, DC 52 Wonder Woman. I don't know which one you you guys like. Believe it or not, I just found space for my Buck Rogers and Tiger Man figures. I literally, I literally, literally, guys, I just found space for them. And this is my GI Joe Adventure Team search for the Yeti. I've just found some space for him. Guys, it's, it's a process. You 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 clean stuff out. And um, you 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 want to like I said I don't stack boxes and guys uh, uh some helpful information if you uh, for the young collectors out there don't stack your boxes uh, side side by side by side like this uh, standing straight up like this but once you you get into stacking boxes and then boxes and cards are different. Because see, I'll show you. You can stack. These cards are extremely light. These Mego cards. And believe it or not, they're not here. They're here temporarily. Like, because I'm doing something here on the staging area. So you can do maybe one or two cards on top of each other's fine. Because they're so light. But the boxes are so much heavier. The figures are heavier. Especially the 12 inch figures. So you got to be careful with that, guys. People ask me, why do you have so so many uh, Rom Romulan commanders? And, you know, my answer is always, I just love the Romulan commander. I love this figure when it first came out in the 1970s, um, part of the Aliens line of Star Trek, the Migo. Uh, never, my parents never got me that figure, though. Never got me the Romulan figure. So... When Migo, when Migo came back out and brought this figure out, I absolutely positively had to have this figure. Another question is, why do you have so many um, blue Batmans? The answers are extremely easy, guys. Uh, I, if I love something enough, I'm going to buy a ton of them. I have four of these. This guy right here is uh, one of my favorite G.I. Joes of all time. My Battle Command Electronic Duke. It says, says over a thousand Battle Commands and sounds. Well, I've never put it to the test but the box is in pristine condition. You're talking about, I think this figure is from 1993, 1994, somewhere around there. And uh, it's in pristine condition. He's beautiful. Absolutely be beautiful. A MIB collector's dream. Everything's in fantastic shape. Here's a... Um, I have a lot of the, like at the 14 inch Superman's, Mego Superman's. This is the first one that came out. Everybody likes to see the number. I love Mego guys. I'm sure you can tell that by now. But uh, this Superman right here, I got two of these guys. Um, this is probably my, It's I think it's a tie. I'm just a huge Superman fan anyway. So I have two of these first Supermans that came out and then I got let's come over here and then I got you want a number on that one too 128 so I got two of these as well we'll reach and grab him I just like this figure so much this is the DC 52 uh, Superman. This is what I do, guys. I am a kid all over again. Want to see what's behind there? Uh, more. My 
rapid deployment force action figures. Yeah, one of my favorite Star Star Wars sets. My Wampa. My daughter calls him a big teddy bear. <laughs> That's. Well, let me see. I don't make sure. Okay. Um, this is what I do, guys. Uh, when I'm just hanging out. My G.I. Joe Friendship 7 box set. This figure was extremely, extremely difficult to find. Very expensive. Uh, I found it actually on my good friends from Cotswell Collectibles. Uh, I had this figure. And they were, I was sitting in my living room uh, checking my phone. And... Um, a Coswell collectible alert came up and it, I checked their Facebook page and they had a ton of new items that they were uh, going to be uh, putting out for sale. And this was one of them. And I was reading a comment section and a lot of people, collectors were already talking about this set. And I, I pulled the trigger guys. <laughs> I pulled the trigger very quickly and, um, it was funny because I was reading the comment sections and I went back to reading the comment section after I made the purchase and uh, a collector had commented and said, oh, it's gone. Somebody got it. <laughs> I couldn't resist, guys. I had to, I had to type back in and and write to them and, and, and in a comment section tell me, yeah, it was me. <laughs> uh, you saw these figures earlier. Um, this is a uh, Jay Piscopo's action figures. Uh, Jay Piscopo is a is a famous uh artist slash uh comic book creator and action figure enthusiast so he created these characters comic book characters and teamed up with dr migo and created these characters these action figures so some of these guys are uh pre-production prototypes that you'll probably never see. Like Golden Arrow, uh, Golden Lad. Um, they were supposed to come out. They never came out. My um, Black Bat uh, is a, one of my my absolute favorites. I got a lot of favorites though. So check some of those videos out, guys. But I, I'm excited because I just got the J. Piscopo uh, wall up here with all his figures. So I'm excited about that. My hero's homecoming. G.I. Joe. Um, I have a ton of G.I. Joe figures. You know, if that's not... If that's not uh, evident by now. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Move this to the side here. He will say, well, we want to see some of these figures. All right, we can show you a few. See my Mego helmet? Uh, my son got this for me at the 2019 Migo meet in Columbus, Ohio. I said I'm just a huge G.I. Joe fan. I'll turn him around this way. This is my Timeless Collection uh, 3. My scramble pilot. Guys, I could literally stay down here in the museum for hours. And this is what I do. This is what I literally, literally, this is what I do in the morning. Got all his maps, everything. Life raft, or paddle, you name it. Vest, air vest, air. I 
Let's pull some. Let's pull another one out. We got the time, guys. It's fun time with MIB. <laughs> Here's another one here. Let's see. This is my Green Beret. Another timeless collection figure. It's one of my favorite ones. Like I said, I'm just, uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to have um, the G.I. Joes from the 1960s. I, I wasn't born in the 1960s. I was born in the 1970s. So when Hasbro released news and information that they would be bringing out a, a timeless collection series honoring the vintage 1964 G.I. Joes, uh, I went absolutely berserk. I was so excited, uh, as a lot of collectors uh, were, um, because what you know, you were going to be able to have a lot of these figure sets and G.I. Joes uh, mint in box complete. And it's and any G.I. Joe collector will tell you finding a 19 anything. G.I. Joe from 1960s to the uh, early 1970s is extremely difficult now to find it mint on package, mint in box. Very difficult, um, extremely difficult. Almost impossible. And if you do, you're you're looking at you're looking at a lot of money, a lot of money. And you know, rightfully so. I mean, these figures are are hard to come by. He's kind of wobbling there. Let me. I just want to see another one here. Let me see if I can get you another one. Wait. See, these boxes are so tricky. They're so tricky. I have everything in here just so. Let me see. This is not stacking boxes, guys. Here. <laughs> get you. Well, I can get you a shot. Of. This is my uh, undercover agent timeless collection figure. Absolutely gorgeous. And this particular figure came with the Kung Fu grip. Bulletproof vest. I wonder if it would stop a bullet. You know, secret documents inside that case. And look what all the parts and pieces and accessories you get. This pistol could turn into a, a gun. There's the scope right there. A knife with a sheath. Flashlight. Got an adventure team. Dog tags. Binoculars. Extra face. For our, our 007 G.I. Joe. <laughs> uh, when you have as many action figures as I do. I have close to maybe 5,000 uh, figures down here. Um, all mint on card. Mint in box. And when you have that many. Believe me guys. Uh, as much as I love my collect collection. And I could pretty much tell you sight on scene if i see the figure i could tell you a story about each each and every one of them but i do i i'm i'm human guys i'll forget about these figures if i haven't seen them in a while and that's why i come down here and have my my fun time and enjoy these guys when i'm not making videos I'll I'll leave that leave him there for now. My Falcon figure is one of my favorites. I got a lot of Falcon figures. Uh, I was uh, um, on a uh, GI Joe uh, 
club page on Facebook and a collector was talking about, uh, said he actually had just gotten a Falcon figure and he was so excited about it and he was wondering if they had any more. Um, he wasn't too uh, um, really up to date on, on the Falcon figures. He didn't have too much information about them. Uh, these figures are from Brazil. So they're not produced here in the United States, which makes them e even more extremely, extremely expensive and hard to find. Uh, there's one of these, this particular figure right here, the uh, Deep Sea Diver. I saw somebody selling this guy on eBay for $175. $175. But uh, So I took some pictures uh, for that collector of my Falcon. Somebody said, well, what's behind this figure, this box? I'll move this box out the way. Oops. More 14 inch um, duplicates. I got duplicates of all the 14 inch figures. My Lex Luthor. That's one of number. There. And my Flash. Give me, my, give me that number. This is my first Flash. As you can see, his necktie thing came off. So, I bought another one. And I'm, I'm just sick like that, guys. I'm sorry. It, everything has to be just so. It has to be perfect. Now, see, putting this box back is, you know, because he's, he's heavy. Guys, want to see more Joes? Let me see. This is my U.S. Coast Guard. It's from 1999. Put him back. I'm doing this because somebody said, you know what? In the videos, we always see these rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and boxes of action figures. We would like you to walk around and show us a few of these guys. So, I'll show you a few of these guys. <laughs> guys, anything for my awesome subscribers and viewership. My SWAT team, Silent Entry. G.I. Joe. You want to bring him over here in white? I got this from Target back in 2002, 2003. Somewhere around there. Another favorite of mine. Um, just because he comes with everything. I mean, look what you got with these 12-inch beautiful G.I. Joe figures. Uh, I'm holding this guy with one hand, but this box is extremely heavy. Very heavy. And this is why I... You can't stack these boxes, guys. I can't say that enough. And I know space is an issue with any collector. Um, it truly is. It, it's, a, it's, it's a big problem. It's a big issue. Because, uh, you know, you got your collection gets so big, you run out of space. My advanced we weapons tester... Awesome. Bring him up to the light here. I have uh, good lighting down here. Not awesome lighting. And a lot of that, once again, a lot of that has to do with protecting um, protecting your investment. You want to be able to protect these guys. So I don't have a, a ton of lighting down here. Because when I when I leave... The museum, the lights go off. I turn the lights off. And I, I, as you can see, I had to make a lot of new space. So from here all the way down, all the way down is Mego figures. All the way at the very end, you can see, oh, let's see if I can get over there. I still have some figures toy company. 
figures. A few, uh, some of my favorites that I have, but because I'm buying Mego in such bulk and high volume now, uh, and you know, with du duplicates like the werewolf. I have to get duplicates of the werewolf. Oh, I had duplicates uh, of Dracula back there somewhere. Yeah, there's, there's the other one. My number. I got a lower number, Dracula and Frankenstein. I can't, I can never get too many uh, Frankensteins. Somebody said, what is this? This is my 19, I believe it's 1972 or 1973, I believe, 1973. Uh, the Rookies. Remember that TV show? For all the guys that grew up in the 70s or the 60s, remember that TV show that came out in, in the early 1970s called The Rookies. And this action figure's name, the character's name is Willie. And uh, I found this at a big fun toy store that was going out of business in Cleveland. And I got his partner somewhere. There's his partner right there, uh, Terry. So I'll be hanging these guys up on a wall. But for now, I, I keep them there. No harm to them. They're in great shape. They're in great shape. See, guys, I'll put figures in anywhere, anywhere I can get them. All of my uh, Hall of Fame G.I. Joes. Here, you want to see one? I got Cobra fans out there that want, want more Cobra videos. It's one of my favorite Hall of Fame Cobras, my Cobra Commander, 1991. my martial arts expert I am proud to say that I pretty much have completed my entire Hall of Fame G.I. Joe collection difficult but I did it guys this is my surveillance Specialist. So I got a ton of that stuff here. Let me see. Okay. You want to see one of my piece of the resistance is my my snake eyes figure. Absolutely love my Snake Eyes figure. It's it's in absolute fantastic condition. I got this for my birthday years ago. Um, couldn't find this guy, and when when I did find him on certain occasions, um, the box was so badly beat up and damaged. You're talking about a figure from 1991. This figure looked like it just came off the toy store shelf, and that's our mission here at the MIB Master Toy Museum um, to promote and showcase um, these beautiful pieces of history as they first were intended to be seen on a toy store shelf. And people ask me, why, um, how, how come you don't uh, open your figures? Um, because of the museum curator illness that I have of perfection, of seeing these toys um, as they were intended to be seen for the first time on a toy store shelf. We want to recre recreate that image for you here uh, at the museum. You know, I had a good friend of mine, RV, said, man, it looks like you have a, a toy store. Uh, your, your toys are better stocked than some toy stores. And I didn't look at it like that, but you know, you think about it. Yeah, he's right. He's 100% right because that's, in fact, that's what we're trying to achieve. 
you know. Uh, so that that's our mission. I have a, a lot of Nosferat, uh, Nosferatu's. Let's see, you know, you can take one away, and then there's there's green shirt Kirks, are my absolute favorite. If you don't know by now, so. But guys, we just wanted to. Uh, Um, share a little time with you. I know somebody always wants to see this this guy right here, my Humvee armament carrier. My wife bought this for me years ago, 2004 to be exact. I love the tires on this thing. It's, I'm sorry about the glare, guys. Kids figure there. There's yeah, maybe three or four Freddies. Yeah, so we just want to bring this to you guys, and this is what I do on a daily basis. Uh in the morning, come down here and spend a little time here in the museum and just uh just relax. You know the routine, guys. God bless. And keep collecting.